Hello, Internet. It's Johnny Jungle Guts. I have been very inspired lately by the people who do haul videos for Yankee Candles, where they show you all the different Yankee Candles they bought. And I'm feeling so inspired that I've decided to start doing some haul videos of my own. Last weekend, I went to the Pasadena Comics and Toys show with my friend James, who drove me. Shout out to James. And here are the things I got. First of all, I got this first edition Wolverine by Frank Miller and Chris Claremont. Frank Miller has not been uh, earning himself a lot of popularity lately with his comments in the media or his generally bad artwork and creative efforts lately. But no one can deny that this Wolverine story is an absolute classic, a must, and I love maybe one of my very favorite Frank Miller and definitely might be my favorite drawings of Wolverine is this cover image of him fighting all these ninjas. Because you see up close he's got the he's got a chain in his mouth. Yeah, uh -huh, yeah, I like that. Also and then to my surprise when I opened it, the whole back of it is a close-up of the chain in the mouth moment. So that is just too cool. Um, I also found this really dilapidated looking um, giant size reprint of the what I thought was going to be all Captain Marvel stories. But is actually a bunch of, I guess, Wiz Comics characters like Dan Dare and Spy Smasher, who I don't really care that much about. But Captain Marvel, I just love, love, love. See, even some of the pages are rich, but, you know, let's find a good one. Because Captain Marvel was drawn by C.C. Beck, or maybe C.C. Beck was the writer. Is there any credits on this thing? Wow, this is so old that they don't even bother to tell you, like, it's... Fawcett Publications. Wow, I can't find out who did this. But it's one of the most... I know he was on uh, Comic Buyer's Guide's list of 100 Greatest um, American Language Comics was Captain Marvel. And, you know, Captain Marvel really took it there in this crazy way. It's about the sky. This kid who has the ability to turn into a superhero by saying Shazam, we all know it. Shazam stands for Solomon, who has wisdom, Hercules, who has strength, Atlas, who has stamina, Zeus, who has power, Achilles, who has courage, and Mercury, who has speed. That spells out Shazam. But the drawings are just delightful, and I love, I love seeing them reprinted really big. It's a real simple... And so this, like, space of this, like, really led into that. But then the other one, I was kind of hoping this was going to be all... I was kind of hoping this was going to be all Captain Marvel, but then there's, like, some Dan Dare stuff in the back. Um, which is, you know, it looks very nice. Actually, this one, who is this? Spy Smasher, yeah. Um... So that's that. Another thing I got was X Babies. Classic. Hit me baby one more time. For those of you who don't know, the X Babies are a uh they're child clones of the X-Men created for a reality show. And this was in the like 80s before they even called it a reality show, but so ahead of its ahead of its time, X Babies. But we've got all the X Babies, and of course they rebel, and then hijinks happens. Chris Claremont wrote some of this. Scott Lobdell and Andy Kubert, Adam Kubert, not Ad. I don't think Adam Kubert. Maybe Adam Kubert drew these stories. Andy Kubert. Um, and uh. There's definitely a couple of comics in here that I bought at 7-Eleven when I was like 8 years old, so that was what really drew me back to it. But here, let's see if there's any awesome, some powerful shots there. Just so you can get an idea of what we're getting into here. We've got some X-Babies going hard. I definitely like the Andy Kubert, Scott Lobdell issues better than the, uh, 
than the uh, Chris Claremont ones, even though I do like Arthur Adams better than maybe some people do. I like him. I think mean, a lot of people like him. I don't know. I also got this uh, JLA Classified, uh, which is uh, New Maps of Hell by Warren Ellis. Warren Ellis is a British comic book writer. He's written comics like The Authority, Planetary, Thunderbolts, Next Wave, Fantastic Four he wrote for a while, but I didn't know that he ever did any X-Men, uh, no, Justice League stuff, so that was cool to see, and um, I didn't even know that, so that was like the most, one of the more exciting finds of this con, um, was this comic, which has this really ridiculous late 90s video game box art cover, even though the interior is like hand-drawn stuff. That was like okay. It wasn't like blowing me away. Jackson Guise, but it was good. It was it was it, it got a little confusing towards the end, but um, it had some funny. It's just very smartly written in the in the in the sort of throughout, but definitely a fun a fun start to it too. Um, so definitely was a good read. Um, what else did I get at this? Oh yeah. I got this science fiction, science fact, analog, The Tides of Cthrupt. Whenever I see uh, pulp science fiction novels with dolphins or whales on the cover, I immediately buy them. Um, I bought this other one that was the Isaac Asimov serial. It wasn't written by Isaac Asimov, but it was his like magazine that he did. And um, it was about dolphins and whales that had become like cyborg dolphins and whales that swam in the vacuum of space. And it was really like awesome. It was like a drug experience just reading that thing. So uh, I don't know what goes on in The Tides of Cthrupt. Actually, I read the first two pages. It's like dolphins, of course, dolphins are genetically engineered to be as smart as people and go on spaceships. Uh, with people and they go to some alien ocean planet where all the coral is made out of metal. That's as far as I got. It's beautiful. And with a cover you can trust, you can trust it. And what else? Oh, and the very last thing I got at this um, convention, this beautiful... For those of you who don't know, uh, Pasadena... CA is also home to the Power Morphicon, I think is what it's called, which is the biggest Power Rangers convention, maybe in the world. And so there was definitely a lot of Power Rangers at this. There's a lot, a couple of cool people at this. Uh, there was a guy, Sergio Aragones. He's a really great Mexican comic book artist. He wrote a comic, continues to write a comic called Gru, which is sort of like a parody of Conan the Barbarian. Sergio Aragones is known for being really, really fast draftsman while still, like, having his work look really good. Like, I bet he could draw an entire comic in the time that it takes some people to draw, like, one or two pages. So, I when I, when I read the release for this con, I didn't even see his name on it. Maybe he was, like, a late edition, but that was weird to me because I think he was should be have considered, like, the number one guest of the whole thing. I think else was there. I didn't see him, but Steve Niles, who wrote 30 Days of Night, was there. 30 Days of Night is a comic book about vampires in Alaska, where the sun only shines, like, once every 30 days, so they don't have to, like, the vampires, like, have a little bit of an edge up. And who else? But, like I was saying, there's a lot of Power Rangers there. There was the second Red Ranger, the first, second Yellow Ranger, the first Black Ranger, and... The star of the show was the first Blue Ranger, and I got my picture taken with him. I don't really know why the first Blue Ranger is more of a star billing than the first Black Ranger. Maybe because people still a little bit don't know how to feel about the Black Ranger being a black guy, but there he was. I saw him being the, like repping the Black Ranger, and I always said the Black Ranger was my favorite Ranger as a child, and I liked him a lot. Because he had the dance moves, but he was actually my second favorite after the Yellow Ranger. I mean, the Pink Ranger. 
Yeah, the Pink Ranger. But I couldn't tell anyone I liked the Pink Ranger because I was gay. Well, that wasn't why. Maybe that wasn't why I liked the Pink Ranger. But you know, all you know, it's like the chicken, chicken or the egg type of situation. Um, but I remember always when they would, they would get the toys out, they would be like, "Well, Johnny, you have to be the pterodactyl Pink Ranger," and I would be like, <sighs> pretend I was sad, but I was really happy. I got to be that. But anyway. Uh, also, I heard last week a Red Ranger from a later season killed some people, killed someone with a samurai sword. I already was going off on the internet about that. I mean, you know, there's like over 100 Power Rangers now, 20 seasons. Eventually, one of those guys is going to kill somebody with a samurai sword. It's just, just math, it's just statistics. Now people are on the internet saying that it's like some kind of Illuminati thing, that the Red Ranger symbolizes the Red War of the Illuminati or something. I don't know what's going on. Um, but he wasn't there, thankfully. And uh, anyway, I got this awesome, if you can see it, this beautiful drawing of all the bad guys from the original Power Rangers. They just all look so good to me. They look like, they just look great. I'm really enjoying this artistry. So anyway, that was my, that was like all the stuff I got at the convention this weekend. And I'm going to make more of these videos of things that I buy because I a consumer and I consume these medias.